Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the show. If you're still with me on this whole series of you know, daily videos, thank you, I appreciate it. I'm pretty surprised because I don't know if I would have followed along this, this long. It's really been a process, uh, but we're getting really close to the end, so definitely stick around. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button today. We're gonna wrap up the old garage roof, so we're gonna get that done, and then hopefully wrap up every exterior detail. Uh, looks like, I know it doesn't look like it in the video, but the dark stuff is staying to the north, which means we might luck out and get a pretty full day of no rain. Uh, so wish us luck, we're gonna get on this and try to wrap up these exterior details because now that the spray foam is done, as you can see, we're gonna be able to get in on this interior. I've got all the interior steel ordered. We have the framing here already, which means we can get going on the framing regardless of what the weather does. Listen to this. Like that's solid, that's gonna really lock in the building. So that's uh, three inches of foam, closed cell. Uh, it's gonna give the customer about an R21. So what we're doing right here right now is uh, the customer had this old roof tore off and this was an old shingled roof and we went ahead and we're gonna put steel on it. But the, the contractor used button caps and uh, this is just a great opportunity to kind of share with you guys, you don't wanna use a button cap underneath a steel roof because it will bleed through in a sense that you will see it. You might not know what you're looking at but you're gonna see these like protrusions uh, through the roof and that is those button caps. So definitely a good idea to just go ahead and lay Lay your, um, you know, whatever the product is, your synthetic felt or your ice and water, and just staple it down and cover it as you go if you're worried about the wind. Um, or, like us, pull the button caps before you uh, roof, but that's kind of a pain in the butt. Now, I told you guys I was going to show you this detail because it's pretty involved and it definitely is one that when you encounter it, uh, there's always some head scratching trying to figure out what you're gonna do. So I'm just gonna take you through real quick Basically what we got going on is the porch overhang It's coming up to where our corner is on our main structure and then it's going to wrap around and go into it uh, You could make it easy on yourself and just dye it straight in right here But I'm not a big fan of that. So what I do first is I went ahead and ran this steel and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my notch right where my trim is gonna be that connects it. And I've already got it marked here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. And what I gotta do is cut this trim back to where it's gonna hit this point. So what I'm gonna do just go ahead and get a measurement. That's the easiest thing to do. It's uh, three and a half inches. So I'm gonna come off of this wall, three and a half. So what I did there, I just cut this out and my trim is gonna lap over. So what's happening now is as water travels down this, it's gonna hit this point and either come this way, but if it works its way around, I'm lapped over top of this steel here, so that water is going to work its way down the side steel. That's where this gets cut. Okay, so now you can start to see that. Water comes down, it's gonna come down this way. I'll have a corner trim that will also cap this. Let's go ahead and get the framing done. Let's see. Go ahead, put that guy out for now. So what I'm doing here is determining where my soffit channel is gonna go. So by doing this, I know where I gotta cut All right, just a little bit more. You can always cut more off. You can never make it 
grow again. So now that I've got this framing done, I've got this notched out, I can start piecing together, uh, but I do need a piece of zip to go here and I'll need a little blocking. Um, dang it. All right, so now that i got this piece of steel, I can start working on these trims. Remember, I already made this guy up. Now what I need to do is, it's kind of a pain because I need the corner trim on or the gable trim in order to do this back trim but I need the back trim on in order to know exactly where the corner trim goes. So I'll try to make both of them kind of during the same time, always leaving myself extra material. So if I have to, I can shave off if I make a mistake and not have to make an entire new piece. I wasn't gonna do my soffit fascia first, but I really need these fascia trims on because the dimension of them is gonna change where this corner exactly is. So I better do that first.
right, let's do that. Oh yeah, here we go. This is where it gets tricky. You gotta get all these pieces just perfect. Call it here, get this done. All right, this is not completely done, but it's almost done. I gotta get off this uh, little section because the rain's coming down and I don't want my camera to get wet, but uh, I'll show you kind of what we got. So I'll end up putting a fastener here, here. All the water's gonna come down, it's gonna come off. This runs all the way under, so nothing to worry about here. This one runs all the way up, so nothing to worry about. Um, coming around the back, remember this is flashed up under, so any water that comes here is gonna make its way out, hit these minor ribs under here, come out. This is, the steel is folded back around, so this little point right here is the worst spot, but once again, um, I've got a trim flashing under there. So this little guy is just cut out to keep the water deflected, and we should be, should be pretty good. Okay, now this right here is a unique spot because we're gonna have our corner trim is gonna come up here and we can't take it all the way up there, but we also don't want it to just die prematurely and then water's gonna funnel in. I've seen guys just take silicone or caulk and just kind of fill that in. Um, and basically what I'm talking about, this is, a, uh, this is a scrap piece here, but this corner is gonna come up like this and it's gonna get tucked into this trim down here. You know, you got this weird transition, so I'll show you what we do in order to make it look good and function properly. What's that? I see that, man, it's coming, isn't it? So first things first here, I got my little slit, and that's where my trim's gonna go in, and uh, I haven't made it up yet. But what I've got to do is I gotta get rid of this rib also and you're gonna see why. Hundred and a quarter. Okay, once again, range coming. Now, what I'll show you here, basically, let me just show you. So you can see here, water coming down is gonna get into that J channel, 
but instead of tucking this into that channel, we just cut this out and let it run over top. So any water is going to come out. And if it goes underneath this guy, it's just going to keep running. And then you'll see how this all ties together. This has been the whole day on and off rain. Only good thing about rain is that you can check your building for leaks, I suppose. Sure makes a mess out of things. And just like that, the rain's moved on, so we're back at it. But uh, before I can do the corner trim up above that we've been working on, I gotta do this lower wainscoat corner trim. I just try to leave my plastic cover on as kind of as long as possible. So you can see I just cut out this one inch, so it laps my base trim. And then I'm just going to mark where it hits my wainscoat trim. So by doing a little bit of a double snip here and then bending it in, it gives us a nice clean finish. And that's what I'm going to tuck right up in there. All right, now this J channel down here, I got to make a couple different cuts. Um, about 53 and three quarters. And 58 and 7 eight. So right here, there's quite a bit of detail work to be done on these porches, on this, uh, the attachment detail of the overhang to the existing building. But I think it turned out really good. Always consider how the water is going to flow. So think like water and uh, do your best, caulk the rest. You don't want to have to put any sort of silicone or sealants anywhere unless 100% have to. A mechanical flashing is always the best. So hopefully that helped you a little bit on some of those details. Let's go ahead and punch that. Anytime I'm in somewhat of a precarious position, I always just throw a punch hole in. It makes a, putting a screw in much easier. Oh, well, you know it's not gonna move on you. You know, one thing I've always found that whenever I get close to the end of a job, especially a long job like this that's drawn out over the course of the last couple months, almost, um, not quite two months, but really close, is that uh, it's the little things that just keep adding up and you have to uh, just keep checking things off the list. Just doesn't matter, just do something, get it done. We got all of our trim details done today. We got that uh, exterior done, we got the we got the garage roof on, we can see we got that cupola on back there. And uh, you know, not always gonna be able to share every detail I suppose. That takes a lot of work because in the end I am, you know, 
I gotta build these buildings. I gotta stay on some sort of a schedule. So hopefully next time, if you guys got any questions about maybe what I did and didn't show, uh, throw it down below in the comments and I'll definitely try to do that on the next build. But keep following along because that interior is gonna be next and I think it's gonna be pretty sweet. So we'll catch you guys in the next video. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. You don't wanna miss this interior. It's gonna be pretty cool. So you guys have a good one and thanks a lot for the support.